crazy animals. <laughs> hey guys, Rex here. So this is a quick video response to a video a friend of mine actually just sent me. Uh, asking me a question what my opinion was on it. This is a video they sent me called Snipers Hide Muzzle Velocity Bench Versus Prone. And in this video, uh, I believe these are the Snipers Hide guys, I would assume, right? Because that's the name of the video. I don't know these guys personally. Uh, but they do a little experiment where they're measuring their velocities, shooting from a bench, from kind of just a, a natural position, just kind of sitting there nonchalant. And then they lay down prone, and they shoot it with a, uh, more of a tight hold on the rifle. And then they go back to the bench and uh, employ some more uh, recoil control, some recoil management techniques. And they did measure a difference in velocity in this video, is what they claimed. And so people were asking me if this is like a crazy thing, or if it's BS, or if these guys are making stuff up, or if maybe it's kind of true. And I would actually say that if you do your experiment correctly, and uh, you control... All your different variables for the test controls, right? You get everything exactly the same. You're shooting with very consistent ammo. Your muzzle velocity is otherwise within a very tight standard deviation. Um, you know, you're paying attention to your muzzle velocity variation in terms of ammo temperature, tam chamber temperature, things like that. If you get everything else perfectly controlled on a, on a test environment, and all you change is the variable of your shooting position and how tight you're holding the rifle, you will see a little bit of a uh, difference in your muzzle velocities and what these guys observed in this test and you guys should go and check out this video I'll put a link uh, down in the description for the video for you I thought it was a good video um, just kind of an interesting thing uh, I thought I would uh, add a little more explanation here so if folks are wondering how that could possibly work and uh, what you basically got going on is Newton's laws okay and uh, they were finding that if you shoot with a tight hold on the rifle, I got a rifle in here, so I'll use this as a deal. So if you've got a real stiff grip on this rifle, if you're laying down prone and you're into it, and it doesn't have a lot of room to push you back, you're going to have a little bit higher velocity than if you're uh, standing offhand, or if you're shooting from a bench where you have a lot more flex and you're not leaning into the rifle, and you have less what they call recoil management, the rifle's going to move backwards a little more. And it's a very simple concept if you consider Newton's laws, Let's say uh, your bullet starts off getting pushed down the barrel by the uh, expansion of the gas, right? You have a certain amount of force pushing the bullet in this direction, but there's going to be an equal and opposite force of recoil fighting against the entire weight of the rifle. It's not going to obviously uh, have the same velocity. There's going to be a much less velocity, but there's going to be a certain amount of recoil velocity coming backwards. And you can effectively subtract a portion of that recoil velocity from your mu muzzle velocity um, before that bullet exits the muzzle. Once the bullet's out of the barrel, then it doesn't matter anymore. But as long as that bullet is still being pushed down that barrel and your rifle starts to flex backwards, not the entire portion, it's not a, a linear relationship straight up. You have to do a lot of uh, math to really figure out exactly how much. And the best way to test that is empirical testing like these guys in the video did. Just do a quick experiment. That'll give you the exact amount of velocity change from a different uh, shooting position. Uh, but that's what's going on, just simple Newton's laws. And if you think about it in terms of, let's say you're going to jump up in the air, and you want to jump fast and high into the air, right? And you're standing on a concrete surface real hard, and you jump with the same force uh, as you do off a trampoline, okay? If you're jumping off concrete, and the concrete's not flexing, all the exerted energy is going into you jumping, and so the uh, force is going to be directed into the actual jumping action, right? Now, if you're jumping off a trampoline, a lot of that force is shared with the flexing of the trampoline going backwards. So you're not going to jump as high or as fast, right? Very simple concept. That's basically what's going on. That's kind of the cowboy explanation of it. So I thought I'd do a quick video kind of explaining that deal. Now, is this something um, that you need to adjust for? Uh, you know, and that's why we talked about it in our marksmanship series to practice and zero your weapon uh, as you intend to employ it in the field. And for most applications that would require uh, such a detailed firing solution to account for a 20 foot per second change in muzzle velocity, which is kind of a small change, it is something that you'd adjust for. But that shooting application is going to be your extreme long range 
or extreme precision shooting at longer distances, right? And so in those applications, you're probably going to need to be laying prone anyways just to get steady. So I would strongly suggest uh, practicing and employing the rifle in terms of the lay of the rifle, how you are uh, practicing your marksmanship skills and your shooting position should all be consistent with how you intend to shoot in real life, whether that be hunting or tactical or whatever, okay? That mitigates that deal and is why we didn't really cover some of those details. There's a lot of weird stuff that happens that way. That's one of the reasons, too, we talk about uh, trying to avoid benches if you can in terms of zeroing the rifle and uh, developing your ballistics tables and your and measuring your velocities and things like that. Uh, harmonics can also throw things off if uh, you have a bipod deployed on hard surface. There's a lot of weird things that happen. So the overall way to get past stuff like that is to consistently employ a rifle as much as you can. Um, and so if you're going to be shooting to where that kind of a small difference matters, you're probably going to be land prone. So if you're doing the super detailed firing solution or uh, measurements or you're doing the super detailed data collection, gather your data laying prone because that's how you're going to employ that style of shooting in the field. Quick solution to it. But yeah, just do be advised that those things certainly do exist. Um, so it can be a practically significant change in velocity that needs to be accounted for at extreme long ranges where a very um, where a very precise shot is needed okay uh, you want to count for everything you can but like I said before if your data is collected shooting from a position with good recoil control right uh, then that is not a problem and you should always have good recoil control anyways you don't want to get sloppy jalopy behind the rifle it's not conducive to uh, consistency in any measurement so consistency is the name of the game and is how you mitigate strange anomalies like that so that was a good video check it out guys uh, we'll catch you around if you have any questions like that shoot them over to me and uh, maybe I'll just shoot a quick response to the video uh, it's a good way to get back with you guys rock and roll have fun Firing a 50 cal off that one, uh, and then it 